Open your Bibles tonight to Psalm number 27. As you find your place, I want to say thank you to the pastor. He is a dear friend, and uh, I, I mean this with all of my heart, and I tell others this. Uh, you folks here at Grace Baptist Temple are blessed to have a pastor, first of all, that loves the Lord, and second of all, that has a vision, uh, that has a desire to do a work for God, but then a pastor that loves his people. And uh, I, I appreciate the fact that uh, sometimes I go to a church where uh, the pastor is frustrated at the people, uh, but it's always a joy to come here uh, where a pastor loves his people. And what a blessing it is. He loves you, and I'm, I uh, know why you're here tonight on a Labor Day uh, 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 holiday and to be in church, and that's a, that's a real joy. Let, let me say one other thing before I preach. I believe the importance... Uh, of uh, the righteous remnant in every city and every town across America is what stays the hand of God's judgment. Uh, I believe America is past due for the judgment of God. And that would come except there is a righteous remnant like this in many, many towns across America. Sometimes we may think, and seven billion people, how can I, how can one, how can we make a difference being small compared to the masses. And then I open the pages of the Word of God and I find that one man, one lad, one person, one church, one group of people can make a difference for the cause of Christ. And I'm so thankful uh, for this church. And I believe with all of my heart uh, that your city and your state is blessed because of your church. Israel was a priestly nation. That meant all of the nations of the world we're blessed through that priestly nation. I believe that our cities and our states, our nation is blessed through the people of God. Amen. God's not working through Budweiser. Amen. He's not working through the casinos. God's blessing this nation through the local church. A church just like this. If you'll stand with me, we'll begin reading in Psalm number 27 and we'll start in verse number 11. Verse number 13 will be our text verse. All of the chapter is a wonderful chapter and I'll make reference to it as we go through the message tonight. <clears throat> the psalmist David says in Psalm 27 and verse number 11, Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path Notice the phrase, because of mine enemies. The psalmist has enemies. I'll tell you who they are in just a moment. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Notice verse 13 again, if you will, it is our text verse tonight. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Look at it one more time, and I want you to now notice just three words in the middle of that verse. He says, unless I had believed to see. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd bless the preaching of your word. And I pause to pray before I preach, not because I am required to do so, not because it is a habit to do so. I pause to pray because I hunger for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. I claim the promise, Lord, you said, I'll pour floods upon the dry ground. Uh, Lord, you said that you would fill the hungry heart. And I pray, Lord, that you would fill me with your spirit. I pray that you would use this message to be a blessing to this pastor, these people, this church, and this hour. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. In this passage of Scripture, there are two battles going on in the life of King David. First of all, David has a son by the name of Absalom who for 40 years has worked to steal the heart, has worked to steal the affection of the people 
away from David the king. Now, David was the greatest king to ever sit on the throne of Israel. The Bible says of David that he was a man after God's own heart. The Lord Jesus himself is a shepherd king. That means he does not use the sheep to build his kingdom, but he uses the position of the kingdom to serve the sheep. That's what kind of king David was. David was a man after God's own heart, but his son Absalom, a rebel, had worked to steal the heart and affection from the people away from David. The Bible tells us it's some 40 years that he's been working up behind the scenes to do this. He would often say to the people, the king is too busy for you. You're not important to, to the king. Oh, but if I were the king, I would take care of this. I would take care of that. And it would sound like somewhat of a, uh, a political debate and a bunch of promises is what it would sound like if you heard Absalom talk. There came a day that Absalom had gathered so many people that believed in him that he put together an army against the army of his own father and the nation of Israel. Uh, you'll find that David the king flees the city and he goes to a place that he can hide from the battle that is about to take place. Now David does not flee in fear. He flees in love. David's not afraid of Absalom. He's not afraid of the army. He's not afraid of them. He's not running because he doesn't want to be engaged in the battle. He leaves because he loves his son. He believes in the will of God. And he knows what can happen to his son. And so David leaves. That's the first battle that goes on in this passage of Scripture. There is another battle that goes on that is not seen in the open, but when you look at the Scripture in detail, you find that there is another battle going on, and it's not in the kingdom, but it is in the heart of the king. And the battle is a battle between faith and fear. In fact, it's interesting when you read the first seven verses how strong David's faith is in God. Look, if you will, in verse number one. The psalmist said in Psalm 27 in verse number one, The Lord is my light and my salvation. He asked this question, Whom shall I fear? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He continues in verse number 2 to declare his faith in God. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, uh, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Uh, th uh, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And for seven verses, David states his trust in God. He states his courage. He states his faith. And then all of a sudden, in verse number eight, fear begins to win in the battle. You can almost see faith in charge, and all of a sudden, fear strikes a strong blow against faith, and another, and another, and faith begins to stagger in the heart of King David. Notice, if you will, what the Bible says in verse number 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. And David has not only a battle going on on the outside between the army of Absalom and the army of Israel. He has a battle going on in his heart. And in his mind between faith and fear, one day he feels like a winner. The next day he feels like a loser. The next day he feels like he can overcome. The, the next day he sees no hope. 
In fact, you and I find ourselves there a lot of times. Now, don't be discouraged or depressed to think you're the only person who has faith and fear battling in their hearts and minds. I believe all of us who are attempting to do the will of God in this wicked world are facing not only opposition from without, we face that fear that comes in our mind. All the confidence that we have until we get there. And then the fear that we have. I recall uh, some years ago in a staff meeting, uh, we were talking about ideas of what we could do to shake our city for Christ. And one of our men on staff, he said, Preacher, why don't we rent the baseball stadium and see if we can fill it up, have a big patriotic service and, and declare our faith in Christ. I said, boy, it's a good idea. And it wasn't an hour, about 10 of us were in the church van. We were going down to the stadium. We went down to the baseball stadium that would seat about 6,500 people and we found the manager and I ask him, do you ever rent the baseball stadium? And boy, the more we talked, the more excited we got. And the more we talked, the more excited we got. We spent some time in prayer. Lord, is this what you want us to do? And boy, we got excited and our faith was strong. And we got a contract and we rented that place. And we began to work. And I went down there one morning, just me, in an empty baseball stadium of 6,500 seats. And guess who met me there? Fear. It seemed that a representative fear of fear was sitting in every seat. And I said, Lord, what in the world have I done? In fact, I learned during that time, nearly 20 years ago, I, I became so afraid, I found Psalm or, or Proverbs 3, verse number 25, where the Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear. And I found that there was a fear of courage. And I found that there was a fear of a coward. And the fear of the coward ran at times of difficulty. But the fear of courage uh, went to God. And the psalmist said, what time I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. And I found myself on the face before God. And the night came and that it was time for the service in the baseball stadium. Not only did we fill it up, we had to open the gates and so folks in the parking lot could see and hear. And God gave a great victory, but there was a battle between faith and fear. We're in the midst of a building program in our church and there are some days I have so much faith, I believe, I believe that I could charge hell with a squirt gun. I, I, I mean, I'd just like to swing over hell on a rotten corn stalk and spit in the devil's eyes as I go by. I have that much faith. And then all of a sudden I have so much fear, I'm afraid to turn the lights off when I go to bed. That's what David faced. There was a turning point. I want you to see it tonight. It's in verse number 13. The psalmist it says in verse number 13, I had fainted. In other words, I was at the point of being finished. I was at the point of fainting. I was at the point that my strength was gone unless I had believed to see. Let's analyze that. Now what's he saying here? He really didn't see an answer to overcome Absalom. He really didn't see an answer to overcome his fear. But he made a decision that he would believe that he would see even though he did not see. He really didn't see any answer. He didn't see any hope. He didn't see any help. He didn't see any relief. But he just believed to see. He saw by faith. He willed to see it. He decided to see it. Hear me well now, child of God. There are times in our minds and in our hearts as we face the difficulties of life and the battle of fear and faith in our own minds. And sometimes we think, I don't think I can go any further and I'm going to faint. And we must decide, I can't see it. I can't see an answer. But I believe I'm going Amen. to see. Amen. I'll trust in Him. Amen. As I read through the Word of God, we have many miracles that take place because of faith. But it is a faith that is a faith that sees to believe. Now, there's a difference in believing to see and seeing to believe. Let, let, let me show you what I mean. When Elijah prayed down fire from heaven, the people saw the fire. The people cried, the Lord, He is God. 
If you recall that story, a great crowd gathered on Mount Carmel, and he said, if the Lord be God, then serve him. If the Lord be God, then follow him. And the Bible said that the people answered him not a word. But when Elijah prayed and the fire fell, and they saw the fire, the people said, the Lord, he is God. And they cried with one voice. They saw to believe. I find the story of the drunken party where Belshazzar had invited all of his lords and they came in and were drinking out of the <coughs> golden vessels that had been taken from the temple and they had no faith in God. In fact, they'd taken the prophet of God and they'd put him in a prison cell and he was there while they were drinking uh, uh, their devil's brew and the uh, vessels, uh, uh, golden vessels of God and in that drunken stupor, Belshazzar looks on the wall and he sees a hand and he begins to write the words meaning meaning tickle you farce in the Bible said that he was so afraid that his knees did smite one against another and I want to tell you something friend when he saw that hand he believed Amen. he believed you see there are many examples in the Bible when the people saw, they believed. The people of Noah's day would not believe the preaching, but they believed when they saw the waters rise. But it was too late. The disciples believed when they saw Jesus walking on the water. The people believed when they saw the miracles of Christ. Uh, they believed when, he saw, uh, when they saw him uh, calm the storms. Uh, uh, when they saw Jesus kill the cripple. And uh, they wondered with amazement. Uh, the Bible says they believed when they saw. In this passage of scripture, the psalmist did not see anything. He did not see to believe, but he believed to see. You see, David saw no fire. He saw no hand. He saw no rain or water rise. He saw no parting of the water. He saw no one walking on the water. David did not see any miracles. He did not see a calm uh, from a storm, from just a voice that spoke to the storm. No, he is in a town all alone. He is in the darkness of the night and the quietness. He didn't see any miracle that caused him to believe. He just made a decision that he would believe to see. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question tonight. How often do you just decide to believe to see? Or are you the fellow that has to see before he'll believe? They said, Thomas, he is risen. He said, I won't believe that unless I see the prince in his hands. And he wouldn't. He wouldn't believe their word. He only believed when he put his hand in the, uh, uh, the, the place where the spear uh, went into his side and the uh, nails went through his hands. He would not believe unless he saw. May I say tonight, there needs to be someone in every family who go beyond seeing to believe and will believe to see. Amen. There ought to be a preacher in every town that doesn't have to see anything to believe. He just believes to see because of what God has said. Amen. And there ought to be a missionary in every town, in every nation of the world. They don't have to see a fire fall from heaven. They don't have to hear a voice, an audible voice. They don't have to see the parting of the waters. They just believe because God said it. They believed to see. Amen. In fact, I want you to think about this, if you will. As the crowd stood on Mount Carmel, they could not see to believe until Elijah believed to see. Are you with me? Elijah believed the fire would fall. They didn't believe it until the fire fell. God give us some people who, tonight who will have faith in God, who will make the decision. I don't have to see to believe. I believe it because God said it. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. But I'm going to live my life believing God's will is going to be accomplished. Thank God for the men like Abraham. The Bible said he hoped against hope when there was no hope. He's a hundred years of age. His wife is 90 years of age. There is no hope. 
There is no way that Sarah can have a child. But he hoped against hope. He believed to see. And God did give him a child. And that child did become the father of a great nation. And there is no way even tonight on this very date that you can explain the existence of Israel as it sits there. That small little nation in a part of the world that hates it and is trying for many different years and times and centuries to destroy the people of God but they can't because God's hand is on it where did it come from it came from a promise that there was no evidence there was no miracle but Abraham believed to see when the people saw the fire fall they believed but Elijah believed to see When the people saw the floods, they came and they cried out. Of course, it was too late, but Noah believed to see. Many people believed on Jesus when they saw the miracles. The disciples believed when they heard him say, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Israel's army believed when they saw David kill the giant. But David believed to see that he could kill the giant. God, give us a generation of Christians today who will decide... I believe God because God said it, not because I've seen anything I believe to see. I believe tonight, and I I want you to understand this, it is not every church in America that has the problem that you have tonight of not enough seats. I know of at least 25 churches looking for a pastor. Pastor. One church called last week, or a man called last week and said, we'll give you the building and property if you'll send somebody to start a church here. There are towns everywhere that don't have a church like this or don't have a church at all. Can I tell you something? It didn't happen because somebody saw uh, a, uh, a fire in the night or had some miracle revealed to them. It didn't happen that way. It was just a preacher and his wife and family that decided they believed the promises of God. They believed in the power of God. They believed in the providence of God. And they said, I don't see it now, but we're going to see it. I believe to see. Thank God for it tonight. The king said to all the crowd, when you hear the music, I want you to bow down to the image. The three Hebrew boys, they had seen something the king had not seen. They believed to see. Can I tell you something? It made the king angry when they would not bow. He gave them another opportunity and another opportunity. And in anger, he had them thrown into the fiery furnace. Don't you miss this now? It was not until they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And the king looked in and he said, Did we not bind three men into the fire? Uh, Behold, I see four. And the fourth is like unto the Son of God. You see, he didn't believe to see, but he believed when he saw, and he didn't see the Lord Jesus until they were willing to go into the fire. Sometimes we're willing to make a statement, but not a sacrifice. Sometimes we're willing to make an announcement, but we're not willing to give all. These three Hebrew children, they were willing to sacrifice. They were willing to die for the cause of Christ. They had had no, they had had no miracle shown to them, but they believed in their God. And they so believed in their God when they put them in the fiery furnace that the king looked in and he saw God at that time. And God delivered them. And the Bible said they came out without even the smell of smoke smoke upon them. God, give us another generation of people who believe to see. In May of 1991, I became the pastor at Clays Mill Baptist Church. I grew up in southeast Kentucky. My grandfather was a coal miner in those mountains for 40-some years. My father had been a pastor. He died at the age of 40 some 34 years ago this past week. My... uh, Uh, The church had called me to serve as a pastor and I'd been there for five years. God began to work on my heart to leave my hometown that I loved. In fact, I didn't want to leave and go to Lexington and take a church that had been going down in numbers. The church had been up to about 200 years before but was dwindling. I went to that church and when I became the pastor, there was 18 people in our first service There were $5,000 in bills that were past due that were on my desk. 
You say, preacher, what did you see that caused you to believe that, that something could be done? I didn't see anything that caused me to believe. I believed to see of what God was going to do. I didn't see anything but past due bills. I didn't see anything but empty chairs and empty pews. But I'll tell you what I did believe. I believe this book right here. Amen. I believe in the God of heaven. I believe the God of Jacob is my God. I believe the God of Abraham is my God. I believe the God of David is my God. I believe the God of Daniel is my God. And I believe what God has done before, He can do it again. And the times may change and the cultures may change, but He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I did not see to believe, but I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and oh how good God has been Amen. you say preacher do you ever have any more struggles since that time I have struggles all the time because every time you take a step forward in faith the devil is always there to challenge and there is always that fear that comes in and he always finds somebody even in church not just outside but even in church that whispers that fear in your ear and whispers doubt and sometimes as David struggled with faith and fear I have those struggles and I go to the property that God has given to us in the day or in the night and so, oh God, I pray that you'd increase my faith. And may I say tonight, <coughs> he's a good God. Amen. He's a real God. And God is able. What do you think God could do in your church? What do you think God could do in your town? What do you think God could do in this state if we had another generation of people that just believed it because God said it? Some are looking for a sign. Others are satisfied with his word. Some are looking for a confirmation. Some are satisfied because God said it. Some are looking for a fire. God said, I've given you the word of God. Some said, I'm listening for a wind. I'm, I'm waiting for an earthquake. I want God to confirm it in my heart. And dear friend, that's not the way it works. God doesn't allow us to see so we can believe. There are those that God, God has a work for us to do that we must believe to see. <laughs> I read the story recently of Walt Disney and how he designed Disney World many, many years ago, nearly a hundred years ago. And before it was built, he died. And they had a dedication when it was finished. And the MC of the dedication said to Walt's wife, I wish Walt could have seen this. And she said he did. He saw it before anybody. If someone could have such a vision for something that is secular, does it not bring conviction on those of us who should not have a vision for things that are spiritual and things that are eternal? Amen. I've told you the story before. My two brothers are retired from the Kentucky State Police I often joke and say they thought they were NASCAR drivers sponsored by the Kentucky State Police. And <laughs> nevertheless, they're both retired. My middle brother had served for nine years as an undercover drug agent. He had surrendered his life to serve the Lord, but didn't know what God wanted him to do after his retirement. One day, my brother was visiting a lady and she said to him, and he was actually working, and I say visiting, it sounded like he was working for church. He wasn't. He was working for the state police. And uh, he, he had gone to a home, and a woman said to him, uh, she said, Chris, uh, you're a religious man, aren't you? He said, I'm a Christian man. She said, I want to ask you a question. She said, I want you to come with me. And she left a little shack of a house on the side of a hill, and she took my brother and she walked some hundred feet around the hill. And there was a place in the, in the mountain, in the woods there that was cleared out. And there was an obvious grave there. There was just a little metal marker that had the name of her son, his birth date, and his death. He was not 25 years of age. He died of a drug overdose. 
she said to my brother, Can you tell me if my son is in heaven or is in hell? My brother called me just a little while after that, after he got home. He told me the story, and he said, God's broken my heart. He said, I've got to do something to make a difference. I've got to do something to win people to Christ and keep them from dying like this. What do I do? How do I get started? I said, just go out and tell God I surrender. He said, what to? I said, anything. Just say, God, I surrender. I said, he may call you to preach. He may call you to pastor. You don't know what God's going to do. Just tell him. He said, but I don't, I don't know what God... I said, but surrender has no conditions. Amen. Just surrender. Amen. And so he did. He began to pray that God would give them a building and they could start reaching people and winning people to Christ. And the drug culture was taking up to four lives a day, every day, and just in the state of Kentucky, and it's true, around the nation, and, and uh, four a day. And they began to pray that God would give them a, a, a building. And one day they talked to a man who said, uh, uh, you ought to go down and talk to these uh, Christian people down here. They have property. And uh, uh, two nights later, uh, that same man called my brother, and he said, I'm not a church-going man at all. Uh, but he said, I can't sleep at night. And here's how he said, it. The big man upstairs keeps waking me up, and I never had thoughts like this before. But I keep thinking, help him start a church. Help him start a church. And he said, uh, uh, do you know, uh, he asked my brother, do you know where the Hillbilly Palace uh, bar and dance hall is? My brother said, yes, all police officers know where that is. <laughs> he said, I own that. He said, if I, if I gave it to you, could you start a church there? Tonight, it's no longer the Hillbilly Palace. In fact, they're having a revival meeting tonight. Amen. There had nearly 300 people in church yesterday. They had folks saved and folks baptized. Seven years now. You know why? Because he believed Amen. to see. Amen. You know what a bus captain does? A bus captain believes to see so children can see to believe. You know what a Sunday school teacher does? A Sunday school teacher believes to see so a child can see Amen. to believe. Are you with me tonight? You know what a soul winner does? A soul winner believes to see so a, uh, so a soul can see to believe. Oh, listen to me. The joy of serving Jesus Amen. and the joy of living by faith. Amen. <clears throat> three minutes I'm going to give you tonight three reasons to believe. <clears throat> First of all, God's Word. The promises of this book are not just written for a meme on a computer. The promises of this book are not written for a plaque to be placed on the wall. The promises of this book are given for me to believe and to live. That's why these promises are given. Amen. God's promises are mine. God's promises are yours. I have no corner on the promises of God. They are as much yours as they are anyone's. And tonight we can take the word of God and we can claim the promises of God. And while we may not see to believe, we can believe that we'll see if we'll obey the words of God. Amen. Second of all, I say reasons to believe to see because of God's works. Not just His Word, but God's works. Sometimes we fear. We don't fear yesterday. We made yesterday. We fear tomorrow. But look to see what God has done. Look what He's done at the Grace Baptist Temple. Amen. Look what has happened from just a, a, a drawing on a piece of paper to a building that's nearly finished that will soon be filled with people. And, and to look back and to see what God has done. Why do we have fear of tomorrow? I challenge you, let's have faith. We may not can see anything, but we can believe to see because of the works of God. He's been faithful. Amen. And then last of all, because of the will of God. God has a will. He didn't give me life so I could see what I could accomplish in this world. He gave me life because I belong to Him and I'm supposed to bring honor and praise to Him. And God has a will for my life and God desires me to give my life to serve Him. And I'll tell you something, it's an amazing thing when you praise 
the king, and when you give your life to do the will of God. Let's look at the verse again, and I'm finished. Verse 13. I had fainted. Unless I had not saw a miracle so I would believe. That's not what it says. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I serve a God that does not need a way because he's a God that maketh a way. Amen. There was no way across the sea, but he made one. There's no way through the mountains, but he made one. There may, no, may not be any way for us accomplish, to accomplish God's will, but he's a God that can make a way. Amen. I challenge you, church, tonight, don't give up on your faith. Don't let fear win. Believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Stand with me, if you will.